question this question also came from the topic of immunology and it came in the year 2017 in the biochemistry section and the question number is 29 the question is stated as which one of the following is not true for class 1 mhc protein so before going more into the question what are the options so first one have to know that what is a type 1 mhc protein okay so now let us look into it and clear our basics a little bit then we will revisit this question so major histocompatibility complex so now you imagine that someone is infected infected with a uh, infected with a bacteria or a virus with any pathogen okay so now we always say that this bacteria or pathogens they will be they will be somehow recognized by our immune system and they will combat these pathogens so that they can survive we we can survive okay so how this immune system works so normally there are two kinds of pathways so one is this uh, cellular pathway and another one is this humor humoral response so the antibody part that we have talked about that is mostly coming un under this humoral response okay and the cellular pathways these are actually governed by mostly this t cells right but they are cells right t cells are a particular type of lymphocytes so how they actually recognize that this particular means how they actually recognize those uh, virus or the bacteria or any pathogen and they come to know that yes now we have to actually impart our function and we need to get rid of them so for that there is a t cell receptor which is present on every each and every t cells and these t cell receptors they are present on the surface of t cells whereas these mhcs these are present normally so there are two kind of mhc major histocompatibility complex so this name actually came from a uh, means from an ex means an experiment where people wanted to actually transplant some of the organs of the human into or transplant something of a human to a mouse or from a mouse to a human so then there is a hello okay so then there is a graft rejection that we have that people have observed so then they have seen that what is the actual actual thing that why it is rejecting that graft okay so this has been found that there are different kinds of proteins which is regulated by specific clusters of genes which is specific to that organism or to that species that these genes which were actually uh, been translating some proteins those are were named as this major histocompatibility complex so uh, as you see compatibility complex means whether they your anything which is coming to your body that is compatible to your body or not so that is determined by this major histocompatibility complex and this is different for you and for me as well okay so there will be some difference so this major histocompatibility complex role is that there this uh, pathogens are entering and their whole all proteins are actually cleaved or uh, they have they are being processed now these proteins so again another thing that i want to mention here is that in b cells what we have talked right, right now is that the antibodies actually interact with some kind of epitope and create this response but there the antibodies which recognize its epitope those epitopes should be soluble because your antibodies are soluble and they are present in your serum so they can recognize only those epitopes which are actually soluble and they are more hydrophilic but in this t cells the t cell receptors they can recognize linear epitopes okay so your protein needs to be first cleaved and made into small small portions and then something will present those peptides that those which are being cleaved and this present this pre uh, this peptides will be presented by something which is this major histocompatibility complex and they will this peptide mhc complex will go to the cognate t cells 
and these T cells will recognize this peptide and the MHC as well and then it will impart its response. So there are other may other things as well. So only by recognizing the MHC and the peptide it will not impart the response. There are other co-stimulatory signals which needs to be there but we are not going into that. So I am just telling you what is the major histocompatibility complex. So there are two kinds of T cells that we know. So one is the CD4 positive T cells and one is CD8 positive T cells, right? On the basis of the markers which are present, means CD4 and CD8 are the markers for these two T cell populations. Now, which MHC will recognize which T cell subset, right? So I remember like this. So CD4 and MHC class 2. 4 into 2 equals to 8. And again, if you see MHC 1 and CD 8. So 8 into 1 equals to 8. So the total by multiplying it should be 8. So in the in this way, you can recognize that you, you can remember that this uh, actually this. Uh, so someone has given some message. One minute. You can't see any PPT? So there is a first slide. So that's this one is only visible, sir. Are you using any other slides? Yeah, but okay. Again, that problem came. So I shared my entire screen, right? But okay, now let let me share what ppt i was showing you again the problem arise okay now you can see right yes sir okay so you could have showed me before <laughs> i don't know right because i have shared the whole screen why you couldn't have uh, since you couldn't uh, okay now you 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 are able to see right Yes, so it was still in the eighth eighth page, like eighth slide. Was it in the same thing, or were you explaining by writing anything, sir? Uh, eighth page. Okay, let me see which is the eighth page. Yeah, so I was there only. No, and I it oh. it, it was this slide only. I was explaining. Yes, sir. Uh, by keeping this slide. Okay. So. Okay. 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 So now you can see, right? So there is no confusion. Yes, sir. Okay. So earlier uh, yeah, the slide was visible. We thought, like I personally thought, you were yeah. explaining by writing something. Oh no 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 no! Uh, I I was just explaining by my voice. No nothing. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. So uh, so we are coming into this. I am building the story to go into major histocompatibility complex. So there are two kinds of T cells, and therefore that there are two specific major histocompatibility complex. There is also one which is which we are not considering. There are three basically MHC1, MHC2, and MHC3. So this MHC3, the major histocompatibility complex 3, that is mostly associated with the complement activation pathway of immune system. So that we are not going into. So on the basic uh, understanding that we have is that there are two MHCs and on the basis of which the T cells recognize the specific peptides and this MHC carry these peptides. So how these uh, MHCs are actually differentiated. So there is this major histocompatibility complex 1 which carries a peptide and this complex goes to the CD8 positive T cells and that CD8 positive T cells actually recognize this peptide pre presented by this major histocompatibility complex 1. So, what is the basic structure of this major histocompatibility complex one? The basic structure is that there is a alpha chain which is actually divided. This is a single polypeptide alpha chain which is divided into alpha one, alpha two, and alpha three. So, this these three this single polypeptide is actually coming from a chromosome six. Okay. So from that chromosome 6, the translation occurs, means the transcription will, the genes of this single alpha chain polypeptide is present in the chromosome 6. Whereas there is another uh, chain that you see, that is the beta 2 microglobulin, which is present in the 15th chromosome. 
and then this beta 2 microglobulin is associated with this major histocompatibility complex 1 through a non covalent interaction. Okay, through non covalent interactions, this beta 2 microglobulin is associated. Now, this alpha 2, which is marked in green, and alpha 3, mostly this alpha 3, here these two are actually making a cleft inside which there is this peptide binding cleft where it will actually bind this alpha 3 is actually mostly involved in the peptide binding cleft where uh, alpha 3 and this alpha 2 and this alpha 3 is also responsible for binding to its cognate T cell receptor so the T cell receptors will recognize this region of this alpha 3 and the peptide binding peptide which is associated with this MHC1 and impart its function. So this is uh, the basic view of how this MHC1 looks like. Now for MHC2 there are two different polypeptide chains and each of them are called as alpha and beta. So this alpha is again having two domains that is alpha 1 alpha 2 and the beta is having another two domains that is the beta 1 and beta 2. Now this because of there are there is no connection between since this was a single polypeptide chain and this has an open end so because there are two polypeptide chains are present and when they are non-covalently interacting the ends of this alpha 1 and beta 1 is open okay whereas in this alpha 2 and alpha 3 they are mostly in a closed conformation because of that in MHC2, a large amount of means I, I, I was saying you that linear peptides should go and actually recognize by this MHC as well as then the TCR. So this linear peptides, how how much uh, what is the length of that linear peptide? So what determines that? So that is determined by this area which is present in, in this MHC1 and MHC2, the cleft how much it is open to accept a particular linear peptide and again only not that area also there are certain uh, amino acids which are present in this cleft that will also decide that whether a peptide will actually bind to this cleft or not but for what i have said that for mhc2 this cleft is much means the the ends are open so that large amount large length of peptides can actually go and bind to this MHC2 complex. Whereas in MHC1, these two ends are closed. That's why they are smaller uh, peptides normally go and bind to this major histocompatibility complex one. So this is a basic difference between them. Now, so I have said you that there are certain charge residues also, or there are certain amino acids which are present in the cleft of the MHC that will determine that which peptide it will bind to because if you see that there may be a lot of peptide right so uh, if someone asks you that whether for each peptide there will be a specific specific mhc for that peptide which will be recognizing that specific peptide only and no other specific peptides so the answer is no because this peptides recognition in the mhc1 or the MHC2, it is done by certain conserved residues which are present in this MHC1 as well as in the MHC2. So these residues that is marked in green, these are actually present in the cleft of this MHC, right? So you see here that there are certain, if there are certain tyrosine, phenylalanine as well as leucine, so many hydrophobic residues are actually present so if a peptide which have a similar kind of residues which are present in the cleft the, with that if that peptide is also having similar kind of residues and it is actually fitting into the cleft then all those peptides which will have this similar kind of residues with which is specific to that cleft of that mhc they will all bind to an MHC and that will be presented to the T cells. But in the T cell surface, they actually recognize this peptide MHC com complex specifically. 
for for a single peptide mhc complex there will be single clone of t cells right so so something which is actually catching the peptides if they are more variable then a lot of t cells needs to be produced lot of different types of t cells needs to be produced so there can be there should be something which which is less variant and they but but still they are serving the same purpose they are hold they are holding various types of peptides and they are presenting it to the t cells so this is how the mhc structurally work okay now if you see this uh, diagram so here i am showing you that how this tcr and this mhcs are working in cohort for the peptide recognition so this peptides needs to be compatible with the amino acids which are present in the mhc group as well as well as the the t cell receptor so what are the residues which are present in the t cell receptors that should be also similar to the amino acid residues which are present in this peptides then only this specific recognition will happen right so this is how actually a mhc1 and mhc2 complex actually looks like and they will after they are getting in interact the interaction happen then there will be some co stimulatory signals which will actually tell the t cells okay now you are uh, tried uh, now this this is an antigen and on the basis of that you impart your immune response okay so this is an just an overview of how this mhc peptide interaction works and another thing important thing that should come into your mind that you i said that there are certain peptides which are being processed by the proteasomal degradation pathway which will actually process the protein but that protein can be your self protein as well as and it can be your pathogenic protein so how to recognize that whether this is your self peptide or this is a peptide coming from a pathogen so that is being decided based on the affinity of this peptide with your the mhc peptide complex with your t cell receptor if it is binding too strongly then that will be that t cell that particular t cell will be deleted or that particular t cell will not be leaded to leaded to the clonal expansion or that will not differentiate further because that particular t cell is recognizing the mhc peptide complex very strongly and that is indicating that something because in your body this t cell receptors are being formed and the, the mhcs are also present in your immune system and they are being designed according to you so normally the self peptides will be binding very strongly and that will actually signal the t cells that yes this is a self peptide and if you are recognizing that peptide and imparting any response then it will lead to autoimmune disorders right so for that there is a control mechanism where these t cells are being taught that this is your self peptide and this is your this is the pathogenic peptide so this is the way they actually differentiate whether this is a self peptide or the pathogenic peptide now let us look back again into the question which one of the following is not true for class 1 mhc protein so class 1 mhc protein if you look like this so what i have said that there is a beta my beta 2 microglobulin which is attached to this alpha chain which has three domains that is alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 and this beta 2 is actually beta 2 microglobulin is attached to this alpha chain to non covalent interactions okay so now let us look into the options mhc class 1 protein are polymorphic so what do you mean by polymorphism polymorphism means that in a species so uh, i will again uh, come to that in there is another question on mhc so i will when i will discuss then i will discuss in details what is polymorphism so polymorphism means that what i have said you that this mhcs are not same for all those or uh, all the all the individuals they are different for each individuals in a particular mhc genes where it is present so it has various types of mhc genes which are distinct to that particular organism 
so they are polymorphic in nature so all the mhcs are polymorphic in nature so that is correct then t cell receptors recognizes mhc class 1 protein so this t cell receptor actually recognize the alpha 3 of the mhc class 1 protein as well as the peptide so this option is also correct mhc class 1 protein are displayed on the surface of nucleated vertebrate cells so this mhc class this mhc class 1 this mhc1 is actually found in all nucleated cells whereas this mhc2 is found in mostly the antigen presenting cells like the dend dendritic cells macrophages okay so why that is so we will again discuss when we will discuss the mhc questions okay so there is another one which i remember is this will come okay and the fourth option here is this beta 2 microglobulin is covalently associated with mhc class 1 protein so that is wrong because beta 2 microglobulin is non-covalently associated with the mhc class 1 protein so what is the answer mhc class 1 heavy chain consists of three extracellular domains called alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 a transmembrane domain and a cytoplasmic domain beta 2 microglobulin forms the fourth extracellular domain and is held in the complex by non-covalent interactions so the answer for your question will be this c okay so this is the answer to the question okay so for your reference uh, you can go through these two courses these are very good courses uh, the first one is of uh, from iit kharagpur uh, so professor shudip kumar ghosh and professor agnyo ganguly so they have an nptl course so you can visit there and and also dr sachin kumar from iit guwahati he is also running an nptl course on cellular and molecular immunology so if you want to brush your concepts in immunology you can look into these two courses.